Welcome back to Obsession Engineering. We're back doing another little bit on the Aprilia RS660 Super Twin build. And today, I'm going to be fitting a set of spider rear sets to the bag. Now, we've already fitted the spider top yoke and clip-ons, and the quality is awesome. So I'm looking forward to getting the spider rear sets out of the box and getting them on the bag. So fitting rear sets to the Aprilia is a little bit awkward because the swinging arm pivot goes through the rear set and then that braces to the frame down here. So we have to take the swinging arm pivot bolt out, which means we've got to support all the back of the bike off the floor. So a little bit fiddly, but it is worth it when they're fitted because they are considerably more racy than the standard items. So let's have a look in the box and see what we've got from Spider. If I can actually open the box one-handed, what we've got is lots of bits in bubble wrap, which is always a good sign. So these are all machined from billet aluminium. All the bits look very nice, although I've not looked at them all. And they all look surprisingly similar to the Aprilia genuine accessory stuff. Now, Spider supplied the bits for the Trophea bikes that are getting raced in Italy that Aprilia are building. So it's no great surprise that these may come with an Aprilia logo on them if you buy them out of a dealership. Wherever they come from, they're blooming lovely. Right, so I've just done a preliminary sort of bolt together of the main bits of the rear set. So I've put the lever on and I've bolted the sort of the rear set section to the frame support section. And as you can see, all of it is machined billet aluminium. So it should be nice and strong. It should be nice and sturdy and perfectly structural. So that's cool. The quality is lovely on those. I do keep saying it, but there is a lot of cheap tat out there, basically, and this isn't any of it. So I'm happy with those. So over to the bike. So all I've done to begin with on this side is take the two bolts out that hold the rear brake mass cylinder on, and there's just a little sort of clip that clips it to the lever, so that's loose. And then the cable for the brake light switch for the rear goes up here behind this piece of plastic, Pops out here and is actually connected, white connected just along there. So that's nice and easy to disconnect. Obviously, we're leaving all the ABS lines and everything on for now. They will be getting changed later. So that's off this side. On the other side, I just need to undo the gear lever shaft. So it won't be too bad. And then, of course, we need to be able to get the bike off the floor. When we built the McCrum's bike for Eric earlier in the year, I put a uh, engine hoist on the back of the subframe and lifted the whole bike when had it on the engine hoist and that was pretty straightforward nice and easy but if we had to do it in the paddock it would mean carrying an engine hoist anywhere and that's a bit of a faff so uh, Robert has come up with a brilliant solution we've put he's put we he he's put a bolt through the back of the standard pillion footrests put them on backwards and they actually are sitting on our um, on my footrest stands and we've just done a quick trial run and when we take the weight off them they actually sit on there perfectly well because there's a bolt in the back of here it doesn't pivot the uh, foot peg up so that's actually pretty sturdy from a health and safety point of view we're probably not supposed to tell you to use the rear pavilion footrest hangers the wrong way around and all that so if you do try it at home don't sue me for it if your bike falls on the floor right that's that bit out of the way um right we need to go around the other side undo the swinging arm pivot bolt and the bits that connect it all to the frame and everything and we can start actually taking some stuff apart so we're just making a bar that will replace the swinging arm pivot bolt so that basically we can knock the bar in as we're taking the swinging arm pivot bolt out and it stops the bike trying to fall in half so we have a piece of bar the correct diameter and robert's just putting a little bit of a taper on the end so back over at the bike, on the gear lever side, I've taken the, the shaft out, the quick shift to this end, and we've taken the 24mm nut off here, and we've undone the bolt that's down here, and the other bolt that holds the side stand on. I've also disconnected the side stand wiring, uh, which normally tucks up near the radiator, up here somewhere, so I've disconnected that. It is a very long wire, and we aren't going to be refitting it. So... Everything's loose on this side, everything's loose on the other side. Once we have our bar ready, we can take the weight of the bike, tap this bar out. That'll sort of hold everything in place, but with no lumps on the end, so we can just slide the old rear sets off. And hopefully, it'll all go swimmingly. 
So we have the weight of the bike on the uh, footrest stands and we've gently tapped our bar in, which has pushed the swinging arm pivot bolt out. So we now have the rear sets off. So the bar is holding the swinging arm to the engine. Uh, it is really still a two person job because the shock absorber is trying to sort of just push the um, swinging arm away all the time. So it is easier with two people to make sure the swinging arm's in the right location for tapping this through. So that's all off. So the next thing to do is to get our new rear set sort of mounting plate and bolt them down to the engine in place where the swinging arm pivot sits and uh, yeah, get it all arranged. So once the bike's supported and you can get the old rear sets off, the new ones are pretty easy to slide on, just pretty much get everything in the right place, push the pin back through. Uh, there's a spacer behind here and it's sort of one of the originals. If we go around to the other side of the bike, Spider supply a spacer for this side or you can use the original spacers and the side stand pivot if you want to keep the side stand on it. So that's pretty funky. Uh, the bolts and bits are just nipped up for now. There is a spacer behind here, uh, and there's one on the other side as well, that just stop the rear set pushing straight against the bearing on the swinging arm. So you've just got to make sure you've got those in, there's a washer behind the nut and bits. But we are getting there pretty easily. But we're certainly making much better progress now because we have... All the rear sets fitted so everything's torqued up everything's nice and tight I've put Loctite on any of the bolts that we don't ever want to come out again we've put some low strength Loctite to hold the foot pegs on because the first couple of times I ride it there's a distinct possibility I want to move them but I don't want them falling off and moving themselves at the moment we have it set up for road shift this is sort of the standard setup now normally if you wanted to swap something for race shift you'd swap this end over so what you do is you do that and then to get the same direction of rotation at this end you use the opposite movement at that end but this of course has a quick shifter sensor on it for the shifter and blipper and I don't know if we can program this to work the opposite way round or whether we'll have to change the shift at this end because if we go back to the original one sort of like that at the moment when we want to go up we push the lever up and that would work in extension to pull that down. Now if I change it at this end, of course, my gear change now is down for up, but that puts that in compression, so the switch will work the opposite way around, which may not actually work. So what I might do is have that down there. We may see if there's an option available, so that the shift rod, instead of finishing here, finishes about here. So if it finished about here instead, and went that way then in effect it would change the direction of rotation you needed the pivot sort of direction at the gear lever end which would mean that the shifter would work the same way around i need to do a little bit of research see if the shifter can be swapped around or see if we can change the lever so it is doable i just need to do a little bit of homework so after a little homework i found out you can switch which way around the switch works in the software but that would mean going to an Aprilia dealer and spending money, neither of which I really wanted to do. So we've modified our lever instead, so the gear changes swap round at my foot, and I think it's a more elegant solution. So now that our rear sets are fitted, the next job I think I'll do is fit the GB engine covers to give us a bit more engine protection. So I've got the GB covers fitted. Now, there are other options available, but I prefer the GB ones because they're really nicely made. I think they look pretty good. They come with all the bolts and fittings and everything, but then just work really, really well. So I think these are sort of my go-to in the world of engine protection. We have to have them for fitting in with the regulations, but if you're going to have something, you may as well have, you know, the one that actually works the best. So that's fitted. Up here, I have a little Jet Prime um, eliminated that gets rid of the side stand switch now on rx we just link the side stand switch out with a little piece of plate but there's a lot of wiring and it takes us some room and this in effect makes it neater and saves a little bit of weight so that's good i've also cut the horn wiring back and sort of uh, taped that all out of the way so uh, yeah we're looking pretty good step by step we're turning this into a race bike 
One thing that we did notice when we were fitting the GB cover over the water pump is that you do actually have to take the water drain bolt out of the uh, water pump. So you are going to get some water out to then put back in the bike. So just be a little bit wary if you are doing this at home, you are going to get water coming out of your water pump. So the last of our GB racing bits is the shark fin. So we've got to have this so that you can't trap fingers and toes in the chain and sprockets when you fall off your motorbike. So this has to fit down here so you can't see any of the teeth on the sprocket basically. Uh, right, I'm going to try and fit it quite well back into the swing and I'm about there. And it comes with your sort of plasticky uh, actual shark fin thing and then a fitting bracket like that. So what I'm going to do is hold it up there about where I want it, mark through the holes with a marker pen onto the swinging arm and then I can centre pop the holes, drill them, tap them N6 straight into the swinging arm and then bolt that all up there. Right, that's the swinging arm drilled and tap and the bracket bolted in place. I've actually turned the bracket round from the original plan because that way I can get the, the shark fin to actually sit flatter into the swinging arm and we've had the rear wheel nut off so we can make sure that even with the wheel all the way back we cover all the teeth. So we've covered all bases and I'll just bolt the shark fin on now. Shark fin fitted. All the fasteners are Loctited in because we definitely don't want those falling off. So yeah, another job done. Bit by bit we're coming together. So that's the spider rear sets of the GB covers now fitted to the 660 Super Twin build. It's come along quite nicely. It is always a joy to work on new stuff. So I'm happy with how things are going. There is always a bit more to be done. But for today, that'll do. Thanks for watching and join us again next time for the next bit of 660. Since shooting the video, we've also had the first batch of carbon through from Jolly's Carbon. This stuff's been made in conjunction with Obsession Engineering and is none of your wet lay nonsense. This is proper, race spec, lightweight, pre preg carbon fibre and it is awesome. If you'd like some, you can follow the link on the Obsession Engineering website to Jolly's Carbon.